All right, this is HD Before Bed, and we're doing the crash course on STARS Reading Group. Last time I didn't get to show off the shirt that I was wearing. I kind of wanted to show it off. It was from the HDHD conference last year, and it was a Base 1 shirt that simply says, Base 1 Movement. And I think this is the shirt that made Mike lose all faith in me as a designer. All faith whatsoever. It doesn't help that the quality is like, Xerox of a Xerox. I mean, talk about fractal lines. Am I right? Look at this. This is a. This part here is actually. This part right here is an illustration <laughs> that Ra made of fractal lines. It's just um, so blurry, and I'm so bad at presenting it. Here we are. And you can see it really didn't come through, um, but. But I still wanted to show it off because, you know, from a distance it looks okay. And uh, that's the base one. Base glyph, it says, I define, which is very base one. It has a little um, worm, which is very base one, a caterpillar. And uh, anyway, it's a, it's a fun shirt. I like it. It's a shirt that I, I wear a lot. So I'm happy with it. Okay, so today we're actually going to be um, continuing on with where we were last week, which was with the geographic pole star, magnetic monopole, uh, or rather the magnetic pole of the Earth. And we're going to talk about the development of the zodiac. So this is Jan von Denberg's Crash Course in Stars. And uh, I see that I actually... There we go. There we go. That's a little better. So, the most important event in the development of the potential to express consciousness, Jan van den Berg writes, took place between 85 and 90,000 years ago. Scientifically spoken, it's a mutation that's carried by the female, and it's called the dropping of the larynx. It took place in the individual stream, from the 39 up to the 12th gate, the gate of the potential of differentiated articulation. Looking at any mutative point, you should also look at its opposition, in this case, gate 11, the gate of the experiential I. To think of languages as a way to relate to each other, next to smell and touch, creating safety and security, but also distinguishing oneself from those with different sound characteristics. And by night, with all the fear and wondering, to live all is, embracing this all, and experiencing how to relate to this mystery. It must have been extraordinary eras for humanity to reach the end of the last glacial period, about 9,600 before Common Era, to find the first signs of a concept of a cosmos, with a central earth surrounded by concentric spheres containing the sun, moon, planets, and the fixed stars. Probably originating in the 5th century before Common Era, while around 2100 before Common Era, the Zodiac was established. This all started as agreed in one of the two, I guess by authorities in, in this area, in one of the two cradles of Western civilization, Sumer, south-central Iraq, along with Egypt. By the way, both described in their lore as serpent-headed creatures of great intelligence and power. Their knowledge was mysteriously learned from a proto-culture, the Anunnaki in Sumer and the Kabitans in Egypt. After a long day of herding the goats, you and your family and friends relax around the campfire and whatever potable your tribe has come up with. Among the most honored of your group is the storyteller whose tales may have been handed down through generations or maybe made up on the spot. Overhead, in a sparkling sky, is a fabulous storyboard. Look, there's the great bear. Let me tell you how he got his tail. Yeah, the constellations, the first great storyboard. They had names to certain patterns, like the bull, the ram, the lion, and other constellations by the same names we use, while before that time, stars were, of course, also incorporated in life. The later people of Mesopotamia took over the old Sumerian names for those patterns. To continue with the ancient Greeks, 800 years before Common Era, who wove their own mythologies into the patterns that, for the most part, were already there. Their names and descriptions were written down, codified, 
through classical Greek times by various astronomers and poets, and finally set in cement in about 150 Common Era by the Alexandrian Greek astronomer Ptolemy, who listed 48 constellations known to him in his textbook, The Almagest. To give an idea how the sky was used as a storyboard, both images express the constellation, the Argo in the sky. Yeah, the Argo, like of the, of the Argonauts. And you can see the um, images we have right here. Arabic influence. The Romans used the Greek list but translated the names into Latin. Most of the star names we know derive from early Arabic astronomers, above all the Persian Abd al-Rahman Abu al-Hussein, called al-Sufi. Around 964 Common Era, he wrote the Book of Fixed Stars, literally the Book of the Shapes of Stars. The book follows the 48 constellations described in the Almagest, with a chapter dedicated to each individual constellation. And we actually have, this is pretty incredible here, I'll scroll down so you can see, these are pages from the Almagest and the Book of Fixed Stars. I mean, how, how incredible is that? Just how incredible is that, really? It was an attempt to create a synthesis of the comprehensive star catalog in Ptolemy's Algamest books 7 and 8 with the indigenous Arabic ast astronomical traditions on the constellations, notably the Bedouin constellation system of the Anwa. The term Anwa is associated with the rain, like many observations related to navigation or agricultural and other seasonal activities. Like the neutrino weather, is it going to rain or not? What is the astrological rain? the star rain, the stars that rain down on us. To remember the first true library was at Alexandria, Egypt, and the first university was in Timbuktu, Mali, while Europe, scientifically, was still in the Dark Ages. The natural order. In human design, we use the 12 zodiac signs in the wheel, referring to the 12-year cycle of Jupiter, starting in zero degrees Aries, about gate 25-3. Synergized with the natural order of Chinese origin, the Yellow Way, based on yin yang, expressed in 64 hexagrams. Both systems should express the natural evolutionary order. The Loss of Order In exploring the night sky, seven centered beings had an evolutionary drive, so to say, to begin the process of developing cognition. Mind begins to confront nature the moment one starts to understand things. Everything about the development of the mind is the moving away from the order of their predecessors, and this moving was gestured by survival consciousness, gate 50, wanting to bring everything under control, within the last 400 years causing its culmination in planning, making things uniform, while all energy went to the Ajna. Ra. We can't ever hope for an age when we can return humanity, or have humanity truly fit into what is correct for it. That order is forever lost, but what is not lost is our ability to find our place. This is the knowledge of differentiation. This is everything and what this is all about. Because the moment that you put yourself into what is the correct order for you, your natural order, that's the moment that everything is possible. Lao Tzu would have called it discipline. I call it self-love. In the end, it really is the beauty of what it is to feel fulfilled within yourself. And that's an excerpt from the 16 Orientations of Awakening. Vandenberg points out, after 1781, chaos became the standard as the natural start for individual order. All right, and this will be our last page this time. Pisces to Aquarius. While we can enjoy the quiet beauty of the evening stars, the Earth is not close to being a perfect rotator. In modern times, this requires continuous corrections to our clocks. It's one of the cracks in the carefully constructed control mechanism of the seven-centered realm. In the past, that wasn't a problem, of course, which is again a proof that transformation is in the detail, at least in this cycle of the cross of planning, showing that human evolution has its own development. 
to be seen where simultaneously occurring disparate phenomena can shed light on that. And that's a quote from Metabletica, Metabletica, The Changing Nature of Man, by J. H. Van Denberg. Oh, interesting. So he's quoting possibly himself or possibly an ancestor. I'm curious. Metabletica. Let's just uh, let's just take a little look and see what that is. Metabletica. Oh wow, Metabletica. No, this must have been an ancestor. Metabletica is from Jan Hendrik van Denberg in 1956. This must have been his ancestor, maybe his father. Metabletica. Interesting. Interesting, very interesting. I'm, I'm translating. Metabletica is a term, or metabletics, is a term introduced by psychiatrist Jan Hendrik van Denberg in his 1956 book Metabletica, or The Doctrine of Changes. In it, he argues that man has not been an immutable fact in history, but rather that he changes in the course of time. That is why our lives are not a variation on a well-known theme, but, a, but different and essentially different. Jan Hendrik van Denberg therefore compares past and present and asks about the meaning and significance of the changes that have taken place. The amazing thing is that these changes became visible in many areas at the same time. The family, mathematics, architecture, spirituality, physics, psychology, religion, relations between people, art history, etc. In the metabletic oeuvre, metabletic oeuvre, of Jan Hendrik van Denberg, a number of themes recur. The fact that man is separated from his environment, dissatisfaction with the usual scientific historiography and the search for other explanations of scientific development. And this last point emerges in two ways. Con cultural history as a long longitudinal section of cultural history studies, one subject but seen through time, and then a cross-section of cultural history studies in one epoch but different different subjects. So kind of like looking at like the 70s, but looking at like music and fashion and film and religion and science. And, or looking at one thing, like religion over time. So the metabletic method, the metabletic method, therefore consists in noting an essential change, because in a certain area, the consequences thereof are clearly and well visible. So it's change, it's a science of change. This can usually be indicated by an appearance um, of an important book. So, at this point, Van Denberg, you know, has had an incredible shows his incredible knowledge. Uh, this is all translated from Dutch, so I'm kind of doing my own retranslation re as appropriate. Uh, finally, there's an indication of the often enormous consequences of that change. For example, psychoanalysis and the subconscious are not just scientific discoveries, but so that the subconscious developed during the 18th and 19th centuries into an anti-ego. That anti-ego arose, according to Van Denberg, as a result of the French Revolution that emphasized the equality of people. By claiming something so contrary to the reality of human inequality, people became strangers to themselves because they had to deny something they know to be true. This development can be seen in historical facts, such as the German doppelganger literature of the 19th century, and the fact that Robert Louis Stevenson's book, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, was published in the same period as Sigmund Freud and Joseph Breuer's first work, etc., or Brewer. Wow, full online text of the book Metabletica, or The Doctrine of Changes. There's a, uh, there's a you know, YouTube out there of... Uh, Scottish man who has to say purple burglar alarm, or there's one where the guy has to say, um, I, you know, something else difficult like that. And that's that's what I think of when I, when I try to say metabletica, metabletica. Well, it seems like uh, it would be a good future topic for a mutative course. And I see a website about metabletics, and I see. Um, some books on metabletics, uh, historical phenomenology, and a book from 2013 called On the Cutting Edge, Memoirs of an Offensive Writer by J. H. Van Denberg. Yeah, Jan Hendrik Van Denberg. And he was born in 1914 and passed away in 2012, or in 2012, rather. 
a Dutch physician, psychiatrist, professor of pastoral psychology, and professor of the phenomenological method in conflict psychology. Very, very interesting. All right. Well, uh, we covered some interesting ground today. Um, we'll, we'll pick back up with Pisces to Aquarius. We talked about the loss of order, the natural order that, that was kind of made more sense in the time of the seven-centered being because it was all about finding your place in the order. And that now we are nine-centered and it's not about finding your place in the order. It's about finding the place in your own order, so to speak. It's a, it's a little bit of a distinction here, right? It's that what Ra said, we can't ever hope for an age when we can return humanity or have humanity truly fit into what is correct for it. That order is forever lost. But what is not lost is our ability to find our place. So we find our place in the chaos. We find our place, you know, as, as Jan van Denberg writes, after 1781, chaos became the standard as the natural start for individual order. Now there was no universal order that we're installed in, but we find our place, which is our own individual place unique to us, as opposed to finding a place that was made for everyone to, to sort of assume. Um, instead of the sort of universal place that applies to everyone, there's now an individual order. But in order to get to that, we had to fall into chaos first. The macro order had to leave and had to turn into macro level chaos so that we could develop individual order.